Let's solve this question together. It says x factorial over 6 factorial is equal to 7 factorial. I've got to solve for the value of x, okay? Now, let's do this. So the first thing we can say here is that let's multiply both sides by 6 factorial. So we have that our x factorial will be equal to 7 factorial times 6 factorial, okay? From here, we can now say, let's open up this and solve this equation. So we have that our x factorial will be equal to 7 factorial is 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2, okay? Now, you have to reach times 1, because 1 times 2 is still 2, okay? Now, this is multiplied by 6 factorial on the other hand is 6 times 5, you get a drill, times 4, times 3, times 2, times 1, obviously. Now, from here, we can now say let's establish a fact, okay? Now, we want to form a number, okay? We want to form a big number, that we can say the factorial, let's say the, fact, the number is 20. So, this factorial can be a very, can be something that can be a product of these two smaller numbers. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Now, let's form that number now. So, we'll start from the smallest number to combine, alright? So, we'll combine from small to big. And let's do that. So this becomes equal to 3 times 2 is 6. Okay, we have 6 here. 6 has cancelled out. So this has cancelled out. Alright. Another 3. Okay. Let's look at this. So we say 5 times 2 is 10. Okay. So again, this has cancelled out. So we have 10 here. Alright. Now the next number we have is we are looking for small numbers, okay? We are going for small numbers. We can take 3 here. If you take 3 here, this number is remaining 2. Multiply the 3 we took from here and this 3 to give us 9, okay? So we've gotten 9. Alright? So you see how the numbers are slowly leaving. Now, again, this is the only 7 we have. and We can leave 7, alright? For now. Again, we have 5 and we have 2. So we can take 5 and 2 again to give us 10. So 5 and 2 strike out. Lastly, we have 6 and we have 4. We can take 2 from 6. So that's you are left with 3. And then we have 3. So we can take 2 from 4, we are left with 3. Multiply 4 by that 2, we have 8. So that we are left with 3 here. Okay? So we have 3. And lastly, we now have 4. Okay, so this is 4 here. Now, we are getting the trend slowly. This becomes equal to, so we take the biggest number we have so far, which is 10. Alright, now let's say that we take this next number, alright? You see why I'm doing this in a second. So we have 9. What's the next number we have? We have 8. Okay, do we have 6? Yes, we have 6 here. So we have 7 here. And then we have 6, okay? So we collected this, this. We've collected um, 9, we've collected 7, we've collected 8, okay? So, what, what we're left with is now, okay, we have 10, so this multiplied by 10. Next up, okay, we have 3 here, which we've not collected, so we have 3, and we have 4, alright? Now, 10 can be said to be 5 times 2, alright? So, we can say that 10 is 5 times 2, so we have this to be equal to this whole thing, okay? So, we have 10 times 9 times 8, times 7, times 6, okay? 10 is 5, times 2, so we have times 5. Now we have 4, okay, times 4. We have 3, we have times 3. And we said 10 is 5 times 2, so we have times 2, okay? So you see we have 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and we can just add 1, all right? So if we add 1 here, this tells us that our x factorial now, we become equal to 10 factorial, okay? Because 10, 10 factorial is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, all right? So our answer to this question becomes that x factorial is equal to 10 factorial, invariably meaning that our x is equal to 10, okay? So this becomes the final answer to this question, x origin.